Soon, we were back at a point where the line had been in the water for several hours, and there the tunny had been hanging on the hook for some considerable time. This was grisly proof that there were many shark around, and an unpleasant reminder of what they can do, not only to other fish, but to a man. the remains of a magnificent sailfin marlin that had been given the same treatment by the sharks. Well, at least it showed that there were plenty of shark around. And then at last we sighted the fin that we had been looking for. This was a big one and he was hooked. We were not fishing for sport, the main thing was not to lose the shark, and the skipper had his own method of making sure that we didn't. This was the first of five big sharks that we caught that day, all of which were due to be taken back to the laboratories to be identified, measured, dissected, and to have the contents of their stomachs examined as part of the marine laboratory's detailed research program. But to see the most exciting and famous fish that the Madagascar Research Institute has ever handled, we had to go to their main laboratories in the capital, Tananarive. And there, I was privileged to see one of the most remarkable creatures in the world, the coelacanth. Until 1938, scientists only knew the coelacanth from fossils, and they believed that it had become extinct over 60 million years ago. Then one, alive and snapping, turned up in the trawl of a boat fishing off South Africa. It was a scientific sensation of the century, but infuriatingly, its internal parts had been destroyed. In spite of an intensive search, it was not until 1952 that another was found, in the Comoro Islands, just off the coast of Madagascar. It turned out that the Comoran fishermen caught one or two each year, but they didn't value them highly, their flesh wasn't particularly tasty, they said, and only their huge rough scales were useful, excellent for rubbing down the inner tubes of bicycles before mending a puncture. But to the scientists, the coelacanth was of paramount interest, for it seems certain that fish, very like it, were the creatures from which the whole of the amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and indeed man himself, are ultimately descended. Every detail of its anatomy, therefore, is of absorbing interest. Its fins have long, fleshy lobes at their base, which make them quite unlike the fins of any other living fish. And there seems little doubt that these represent the first rudimentary legs, which enabled the ancestral amphibians to drag themselves from the water and begin the colonization of the dry land a process that the recently evolved little mud skippers are now repeating all over again on their own account. Furthermore, when scientists examined the internal organs of this strange creature, they discovered that it had the beginnings of an air-breathing lung. If any animal in the world deserves the much-used expression living fossil, it's surely this.